How's it going? So first off, let me say sorry, because I haven't uploaded in like more than two weeks now. And the reason for that is that I've been kind of like slacking on the edits quite a bit. No, seriously, like I've been working. Uh, I was shooting a music video, a really cool one that you'll see uh, probably in the beginning of September. And then uh, we, uh, we just finished shooting for Red Bull in Germany for the Drift Masters. And uh, apart from that, we also went on a big trip uh, f uh, for the Pirate Tour number two in a different location. It's always an exciting trip and uh, I'm really excited to show you what it's gonna come out. But this is not what we came for. We came to hear about Rule Steady Go. As you know, Rule Steady Go is this super exciting and really cool stabilizing software that you can use straight from your GoPro footage and just uh, have this amazing effect on them. I've been using for quite a bit and um, I've realized that some of you still struggle with a few things here and there. So I'm here today to give you my best tips to just achieve the best result out of your footage. Okay, so first the GoPro settings. I use the Hero 6 uh, on Real Steady Go. The reason for that is that the Hero 7 and the Session 5 are uh, working, but you need to have like squishy mounts for it. And it's just so simple to have the Hero 6 just hard mounted normally on your quad and that just like saves your life quite a lot. Um, and then I do something else on it is that I put the 1.6 firmware. Uh, it's an older firmware, but it just makes it uh, a, a lot easier for the reason that it doesn't put as many keyframes and also the way the data is processed is a bit better. Apart from that, I use either 4K in 30 frames a second or 2.7 in 60 frames a second in 4x3. It's important because Real Steady Go is going to make it a 16x9 right after. So you want it to be uh, a, a 4x3 so that in the end you get a 16x9. Unless you want, because if you get a 16x9 it's going to make it like a cinema uh, kind of format and uh, I just like to have the space even though I'm going to put black bar after I just like to have more space. The more space you have the better always. And then you want to uh, like lock everything on it, so lock your shutter speed uh, accordingly based on whether or not you have an ND. A common mistake that a lot of people do is that they tend to overexpose the footage and then uh, what happens is that it's going to make it look a bit shaky on real, even on real steady. Real steady is going to have problems uh, processing it properly, so you want it to be a bit darker and especially on those screens because they tend to look a bit lighter as well as I've noticed uh, and then uh, that's basically it for the for the GoPro. So now let's move on to the actual software Real Steady Go and for that I've prepared two footage for you. Uh, the first one is from a parkour video that I shot recently and on that day I had a bit of a problem because it was really windy and the mount that I had on the Cine Whoop was too shaky. Uh, it was kind of a bit broken, so uh, the footage came out a little bit weird and shaky, as you can see here. Yeah, <laughs> that is really shaky. Um, so it's something that can happen sometimes, and the good thing about that is that we can fix it with, with Real Steady, um, so you, it can literally save your day uh, with that. All right, so now we're just gonna move on to footage. So you click basically here on load video, and then you click on that first one on top. That's the one that we just watched. Now it's gonna say running the numbers for a few seconds, and then after that, it will gonna start placing some keyframes. Uh, you're gonna get two. One in the, the beginning and one at the end. And all right, so this whole process took about one minute on my laptop that's actually processing other things at the same time. So pretty good. Um, then we are gonna, the first thing that we're gonna do before we touch anything is that we're gonna delete these two little keyframes that we have. Uh, it seems a bit counterintuitive, but that's what you need to do because uh, on for FPV footage, it's gonna place it wrong, basically. Um, all right, so now I'm just gonna 
take, uh, I mean, I'm just gonna take a, a, a place where I see that the drone is moving forwards without uh, any, like, a very linear movement. Basically, you want it to be kind of like the zero um, type of oscillations that it's supposed to have. So, uh, an oscillation that it just has when it's moving forwards. Um, all right, so now we're gonna click uh, basically here should be a good place to start uh, When you're gonna start it, it's always gonna like rewind a little bit so you let it run and then you click on it so you see it rewinds a bit and now it's do it's uh, Synchronizing the gyro data in the GoPro uh, and the video that it sees uh, so it just did it and uh, already it looks a lot better but for it to work perfectly you need one in the beginning and one at the end all right so now what i'm going to do is that i'm just going to take that little handlebar and shift it to the side here so that this whole part of the footage we don't really need it i'm just going to use that and then i'm going to try and find a place towards the end that will work for what we're looking for um, all right. I think right after that, it's going straight. Yes, here. Yeah, here will be fine. So now I'm just gonna click on the keyframe again and place my second keyframe. And there we have it. Um, it looks pretty decent from what I'm seeing right now. It looks fine to me. Uh, but we can tweak a little bit the options to see what it would look like um, So the first one is smoothness. It goes from low to normal to high and Essentially what it does it just plays with the FOV because honestly even when I put it on low, it's always very smooth um, So normal is kind of like that classic look where everything is very like straight and everything looks very natural uh, but sometimes you want it to be a bit wider I never tend to go towards like over than normal like towards high because uh, it crops in the image too much for my taste uh, but sometimes if I feel like I need a bit more of uh, of width in the image and a bit wider FOV I will like lean it towards like here for example uh, so I'll click OK and it's going to recompute the smoothness and just make it work for that type of stuff. So we're going to see how wide it makes it look. All right, made it slightly wider. We could stretch it all the way to uh, very, very low to see how it would look like. Uh, the danger with that is that it will start looking on movements is going to start looking like all like motion blurry and completely disorienting so i tend to always keep between normal and the section between like uh, uh, low and normal so yeah now it made it wider um but yeah this is too wide like as we get close to him it doesn't look like um we're actually close to him so i'm just gonna put it back up here for example and uh, then we're going to look at the different options that we've got okay so the next option is the cropping speed so to stabilize real steady what it does is that it zooms in and out of your image um, depending on how much it needs to uh, stabilize and uh, sometimes you'll have that effect of just going like towards something uh, even faster and uh, some people don't like that as and I personally don't like it when it gets noticeable so what you can do to counter that is to uh, just bring it back to slow a little bit uh, this will help with with that kind of movement and it will make it look a bit more natural usually I just tend to keep it uh, synchronized with the with the smoothness because as you move it it just does that and it it tends to work pretty okay with me uh, then you have like different options like flip gyro data for example if, if your camera is upside down as you're filming But it never happens to me because I never do that uh, Lock horizon is something that you will use uh, more for like um, Time lapses for example uh, And also you've got the time lapse option, but yeah, it's more like for handheld movements than actual FPV to me I've never used it for FPV 
Um, so there you have it for the settings. Now uh, that we've got our video set up, we are gonna render it. By the way, I've used these little handles at the bottom here to uh, cut down the video a little bit so that it makes it uh, shorter and that will shorter the rendering time uh, in the end. And that is it basically for the basic workflow. It took about um, less than 10 minutes to stabilize the whole shot. And now we can really see the difference between the two. Here is a before and after. Uh, now there's some particular cases where you have to put more than two little uh, keyframes and that is when you shoot in more than one scene uh, with the same uh, GoPro shot basically. So sometimes let's say I do three uh, times the same action or like two times the same action and then a different action where I use a different uh, like part of my throttle, for example, let's say I'm at like 50% for the two first shots and then at the last one I'm full throttle, I will use uh, more uh, keyframes, basically putting one at the beginning of each action and one at the end of each action so that it's stabilized according to like this standard vibration that you can get uh, in the beginning because your quad doesn't vibrate the same way if you are full throttle or if you are at the very low end of it and uh, also sometimes if I have one little bump uh, I will put just one keyframe over there to smoothen it out but I try to have them as much as possible just two one at the beginning one at the end now we're moving on to a different issue so we are reopening our real steady go and we are going to look at a little bug that I have spotted so basically here, the problem happens during the gyro video sync um, phase. Uh, and uh, what happened to me on that one, and it's the first time it ever happens to me uh, on a, like that piece of footage, is that um, you will have the gyro uh, for the second part of the keyframe that will just like keep running and it will keep going forever without ever stopping if it, it, it will go around the whole video if you let it go so now you have this really cool shot that you can't really use because i mean real city is not stabilizing it so what do you do well there's a way around that as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to close real steady and uh, i'm going to take the um, node data, that's the data that is used to basically just place the keyframes on a uh, piece of footage. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy the one that we just used for the other one and I'm going to rename it with the name of the footage that we've got. So now you reopen real steady. And what Real Steady is going to do is that it's going to look at if there's any uh, bin file, the, the ones that we just saw. And if it's, it's got one, it's just going to read that one out. And normally it should work and we shouldn't have any problems with that footage anymore. And yeah, as you can see, it has placed two keyframes, which are basically just the time codes of the other video. And uh, now I can just go ahead and delete those and be fine with it. Problem solved. Another little bug that people found, uh, I've never experienced it, but a friend of mine recently had it on a session five, is that if you import from a PC, you import everything from your SD card, you put it on your PC, and then you just slide it in real study. It's gonna tell you that there's no metadata or that it can't read it or something like this. And the way he found around that 
is that he, he's just stabilizing straight from the SD card to real steady and then it just like the problem is basically solved um, so uh, that's the problem that Florian Le Prior found and um, yeah like um, if you ever find it just uh, use that little technique of just playing straight from the SD and you should be fine and that is basically it for our little tips and tricks on real steady uh, the conclusion is that you want to use a hero 6 uh, you want to every time you take some a piece of footage you want to delete all the keyframes that you've got in and just place to in places where the footage just goes straight and it's just uh, linear no like crazy flips and rolls or anything just something where you go straight um, you can use uh, the smoothness to just adjust the FOV and then if you have any bugs you can just uh, rewind the video and check that out all right I hope that this video helped you out and it gives you kind of a clearer picture of what real study is and what it can do um, if you want to get it you, if you don't have it and you want to get it I have a little coupon for you uh, that gives you a $5 discount it will be right here so that's the code that you can use to get that uh, $5 coupon and uh, it supports the channel in a really good way so thanks a lot for the people that already used it and uh, that's basically it for me today see you next time bye bye